Hey guys, thanks for stopping back by the shop. This is a quick follow-up to uh, Screwy Tuesday number 53, uh, threading with the ELSR. Um, as I was producing the video, I saw that I had misspoke. And uh, I was thinking, oh, well it's too late, I gotta, the video's getting in the can. But I wonder who's going to bust my chops. Well, come on guys, think about it. Who would bust my chops? Well, nobody else but my good friend, Tom Lipton, Ox Tools. He caught it, and he got me. <laughs> so I'm going to rearrange the uh, camera, and we'll talk about it real quick. And um, the second thing, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a picture of this piece of paper. I tried doing it in the first video, but I didn't have a JPEG of it. And what this sheet is, thread cutting on the lathe, depth of feed tool, when cutting American threads. It'll do both, the sheet has both coarse and fine threads. And what it does is it, it gives you the, the, the uh, threads per inch and then it gives you two feeds. One was reading the compound and the other is basically reading the cross slide. And I mentioned in the video that I needed to hit 99 thousandths in feed, and that was on the compound, and that's what's highlighted here. And how I put the um, the Keith Fenner dashboard, I was saying that I was setting it there to read zero. Well, how I actually had it set up was that it was reading the stroke or the the uh, movement of the tool post, which would be feed, feed depth compound at 30 degrees. So as, as you all know, or most of you would know, is as you feed with your compound, yes, the tool is moving in, but it's moving in at an angle. And so that's why there's two different measurements here. Feed at the compound, double depth of thread is 99 thousandths, feed at the cross slide or the tool post is uh, 57, 58 thousandths. Hence the difference because it's going at an angle. So I'll move the camera over and uh, we'll talk about it real quick. Okay, here's what I should have shown and I and I had done it incorrectly. Let's see if I can block the light. How do you block the light? Block the light. Uh, it's about there. Well, maybe you guys can see it. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, dial's on zero. The dial indicator's on zero. Right? So if I back out and I come back to zero, if I come back to, so there it is right there. If you don't take enough uh, backlash out of the compound, you may not come back to zero. I mean, out of the cross slide. So let's... Okay, this is what I should have shown the other day, which I didn't. The dial indicator is against the cross slide, not the tool post above, which is sitting on the compound. So you can see I have both set at zero, in hitting the camera, of course. And if I back out and then come back, I come back to zero on both both readings. If I was to back out just a little bit and come back to my zero, I still got it. I managed to get enough backlash out of the uh, out of the uh, lead screw there. So that was another quick check to make sure that I was on the back. Because sometimes I would I would get real radical and go back and well was it that zero or was it this zero? Well, as you can see, it's this zero. So that's that's a little catch that works really well. Now. What I had shown, and I'm going to move the uh, indicator up. Bear with me for a second. So I'm going to move the indicator up, and we're going to sit against the tool post. Okay, tool post is square. Let's see, can you guys see that? Of course, you can't see it. Of course, we got the glare, so yeah, you may have to take my word for it. Maybe I can block the glare. 
Um, well, there we go. Let me get the light out of there. So let's uh, let's set this guy on zero, and we have the cross slide set at zero right here also. So as we were showing earlier, if I back out and come back to zero, both of them are going to read zero. No? <laughs> what happened there, Charlie? Let's try it again. Okay, try it again. So we're against the tool post right now. Nothing else moved. Back out. Arr, something ain't working. All right. Take two. Okay, we're back from that. Uh, what happened, I had the uh, clamp too tight and it seized up the indicator. Arr. So anyway, both are on zero. If I back it out, come back to zero, they're both on zero because I haven't moved the compound. If I feed in five thousandths on the compound, back it out, come back to, to zero on my hand wheel, still at zero. I think I had too much backlash in there. As you can see there, as we're feeding, this video is not turning out right, god damn it. All right, we're going to try it again here. So let me back out a little bit, and we're going to come back into zero so I can show what I'm trying to explain here. Crossfeed's on zero. Right now the tool post is on zero. We back out, we come back, and we're on zero on both of them, right? Okay. Now I feed in. I'm going to feed in uh, 10 thousandths just for, for yucks here, all right? So we've made a couple of passes. Well, you can see right there we've already moved 3 thousandths on the infeed. Back out. We come back to zero. And there's the 3 thousandths. It repeats. So now we're starting to read what the paper said um, wherever I put the damn paper. So we're reading the cross slide reading, which we could we could do our input to the fifty-seven thousandths and not really worry about the ninety-nine thousandths on the cross on the uh, compound. So anyway, I hope my babbling here is uh, helps you guys. Uh, as you can see, the dial indicator helps, and it's a, it's another check too. You can actually go both. You should be going 99 thousandths on the compound, and you can watch the dial indicator and see that you end up with the 57 thousandths, and it gives you a good judge between the two. So anyway, uh, hope this helps, and uh, I'm going to show you one other thing here on the lathe while we're here. As you know, I showed on the Monarch the, uh, the cutouts, the ELSR, how it would shut the uh, cross feed off and actually back, it would go back the other direction. Well, my clausing has something similar here. This item right here, when you engage the feed, as you can see, it raises up, and this ramp abuts the cross slide, and it kicks the lever out, and, and it'll stop the, the uh, feed towards the headstock. Um, I'm going to actually... Now that uh, I fooled around with the Monarch the other day, uh, I figured out that I'm going to build a fine adjust for this guy. Uh, currently, you undo the bolt here and you move it close and you fool around with your fine adjustments. Um, and you're reaching underneath the uh, cross slide there. The, um, I'm going to end up adding a, a piece here that's adjustable up and down that you can fine feed right here and uh, make it adjustable. So looking forward to doing that and showing it. And uh, to close out this video, something I didn't mention the other day about the Monarch is the uh, cross slide here has an oil pump in it. And so as the spindle's turning, the oil pump is actuated and the ways on the compound and on the cross slide uh, get lubricated.
so you don't have to oil the ways on this machine. It's automatically done. The uh, compound, yes, you do have to oil it. And uh, also on your tailstock, you do have to oil it. But it has an oiler here, uh, an oiler for the spindle, and it has an oiler here which has passageways to go down and actually oil the ways. I thought I'd just add that. It was, I thought that was a neat item and I forgot to explain it the other night. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again this coming Tuesday. This was just a follow up to Screwy Tuesday number 53 and a lot of screwy discussion in here I think too.